I'll start with this. You know, fans, and, and, and I understand, fans are more emotional than I am. You know, I watch the games. It's all part of homework. I'm not, I'm not rooting for anybody. I thought Kansas City was going to win last night and should have. They kind of almost did but didn't. Um, but fans want me to change my season opinions based on outcomes of singular games, and I'm never going to do that. I don't feel any differently this morning than I did last night. Kansas City's going to win that division, and I felt they gave it away last night. Listen, we prep for two and a half hours. I don't just come in here and blah, 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 make stuff up. Um, last night, Denver and Kansas City changed nothing for me. I think Kansas City is, is built for the long haul. I think their defense is built for the winner. I think their running game is built for it. Um, I don't think Denver is built for post-Thanksgiving. If you go look at Peyton Manning since 2003, and, and this is the worst version of Peyton Manning, um, since 2003 in September, 27 touchdowns, three picks, eight and one. He's unbelievable. Like, he's historic, all-time great. Since 2013 in December, three times the interceptions, 30% fewer touchdowns, and the quarterback rating drops. And he doubles his losses. So, and he's just not been as magnificent. Last year in December, he had three TDs and six picks. And then there was the game against uh, Indy in January. That was, uh, that was awful. There was an injury component there. But um, I think this, this Denver team in a division that's getting better, uh, I don't think they'll age well. Uh, the outcome of games does not change the narrative for me at all. I think Philadelphia is a much better team than Atlanta. And Philadelphia lost Monday Night Football to Atlanta, and I think the Eagles are one of the top five teams in the NFL, and I think they're going to beat up on Dallas at home. Um, I mean, if you think of that game last night, just think about this. Peyton Manning, who is just worshipped by everybody, had a pick, should have had three more, um, pick six, and had a wide-open receiver in the end zone he didn't hit. He hits him four years ago. So Kansas City led 14-0, gave it back. Uh, led 24-17, gave it back. Yeah, I mean, think about this. Kansas City had five turnovers, and it took that play to beat them under a minute. So I think Kansas City's a better team. I think Peyton's not going to age well. It is funny. Peyton has been, you know, listen, we all know that the media has agendas. Like, we all know that, right? When you watch MSNBC, you know they're going left, and you watch Fox News, and they're going to lean right. You know that, right? When you watch games, you know— it's not that announcers deeply care about your teams. They don't. But announcers like certain players. I mean, John Madden, at the end of his career, could not be critical of Brett Favre. He was just incapable of it. And Jim Nance, who's a golfer and got his wine business and is super smart, you can tell he and, he and Phil Simms love Peyton Manning. I mean, they, hang, they I would not be surprised if they've hung out, they've golfed a lot, they've been in charity events. But, I mean, last night, Peyton did not play particularly well. I mean, he did not. He could have had easily four interceptions. But I swear to God, at the end of the game, it was just a, oh, Peyton Manning's hair flows like a golden river. His legs sturdy, glistening with excell excellence. He could throw a football over a mountain range. I would curl up with him near a fire, if time permitted, on CBS. But we've got this Buick commercial. He is Peyton Manning. Oh, give me a break. He didn't play well. And Jamal Charles, who is a better running back today than Peyton is a quarterback, fumbles, goes to the sideline, and Jim Nance takes a shot at him. Yeah, it's tough. At least he held on to the helmet. Hey, what's going on? But, I'm, you know, you get to a point where I think Peyton has uh, – uh, Peyton Manning has a, a career, and after 15 years, Peyton in the offseason is involved in charities and businesses and golfing events, and a lot of times it's with these network announcers. And I've found through the years I don't root for teams, but there are people I'm rooting for. I like Urban Meyer. I like him. I know him. I know his wife. I want to see Urban succeed. That doesn't mean I can't watch a game. And if Oregon outplayed him, I'd be happy for Oregon. I used to live in the state. But there are people. I mean, you can tell with Peyton Manning. He has done a lot of favors for a lot of people. He signed a lot of autographs for a lot of people. And he has, not that everybody's beholden to him, but, I mean, you can tell the announcers. And, and Peyton, not that Peyton has rabbit ears, but he's aware of what people say. And I, I mean, when you watched the game last night, Christine, did you think Peyton Manning 
did you think he played particularly well? Not at all. Neither did I. John, did you think Peyton played particularly well last night? No, not so much. Not so much. But the if you if you wrote down what the announcer said, you know, Trent Dilfer, a friend of mine, was on Monday Night Football, and Trent is friends with Trent Balky, the general manager of the 49ers. And good God, you would have thought Colin Kaepernick was Johnny Unitas. This was an unbelievable performance by Colin Kaepernick as he climbed the mountain range, lightning bolts, swatting them away. Trent, he threw for 160 yards. He's still mostly one-dimensional. But you, you, you get these relationships where, you know, the announcer knows the guy and he's a friend of the, you can't You can't be in a business. I've been doing this 25 years. I root for Troy Aikman to succeed. I like Troy Aikman. I like Howie Long. I like Trent Dilfer. You know, Joe Buck. I'm, 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 I like those people. So I, I feel like you're getting a little bit of that stuff that, that the announcers, they're not rooting for Denver. It's not. It's nothing against Andy Reid, but they are close to Peyton. They like him. They respect him. He's done favors, and you can sense it. So um, Johnny Manziel is going to start for Cleveland. You know I don't want to talk about that. You, you know it wears me out. But I will say something in regards to that story, and I think it's true for all of us that – I, I'm not going to give it away, but there is something that is an absolute in every business that any of us work in. And it doesn't matter. It's not gender specific, ethnic specific. It matters more than we've ever given it credit for. And that is called winning the room. And, you know, you hear that and you're like, well, I mean, they, they drafted him that, Jay Glazer's around the corner as well. My blazing five picks at the top of next hour. I will explain what winning the room is and why it matters so much and why I think two quarterbacks in this league will never get it. They'll never get it. 877-757-HERD. This is The Herd.